price discovery mechanism and why it's so important to the markets. Let's dive right in. The price discovery process or the price discovery mechanism is the process of determining the price of an asset in the marketplace through the interaction of buyers and sellers. While price discovery mechanism is frequently discussed in the context of financial markets, such as a stock market, this mechanism applies to all kinds of interactions, whether that's when you're buying a house, bidding up a product on eBay, or at a yard sale. Many factors play a role in the price discovery mechanism. Some of these factors are the number of buyers, the number of sellers, the willingness or risk appetite of the buyers and sellers, and the transaction costs. Let's think about it with a simple example. If there are a lot more buyers than sellers, sellers will have more power to dictate the price they want for the product they are selling. This will result in the price going up. Similarly, if there are more sellers, buyers will have a lot of choice and will get a lower price, all else being equal. But the seller's willingness could play a role. If the sellers refuse to lower the price they are asking, the transaction won't happen. Thus, willingness plays a huge role. Similarly, if the transaction cost is too high, that discourages transaction and limits price discovery. Let's walk through some examples to really understand how prices are discovered. We will use the housing market to understand price discovery mechanism. Imagine there is only one home for sale, but many, many buyers. One person is willing to buy it for $280,000, another one offers $290,000, and yet another offers $300,000. Assuming the seller is looking for at least $280,000, who gets the home? The buyer who's willing to pay the highest amount, that is $300,000. Thus, the price discovery happens with the highest bidder. However, if the seller wanted to get at least $350,000, he won't accept any of these offers. No transaction occurs and no price discovery happens. It's not until a buyer steps in to purchase it at $350,000 or the seller lowers their asking price to match the buyer will the home be sold. The seller has the power in this case and the seller along with the marginal buyer is responsible for the price discovery. What happens if the situation is reversed? Only one buyer, but many exactly identical homes. This situation favors the buyer who can purchase any one of these homes. Let's imagine three homes. All homes are priced the same at $300,000, but the buyer is only willing to pay up to $285,000. None of these three homes will sell, but as soon as one of the sellers lowers their asking price to $285,000 or below, the buyer can now step in and buy the home. In this case, we have seller 1 who lowers the price to $280,000 and thus the transaction can happen. The buyer has the power here. One important thing to understand is that despite all homes being identical, all the sellers don't have to lower the price. All it takes is one seller to lower the price, also known as the marginal seller, to help the price discovery. Once this transaction happens, the other two homes are effectively valued at $280,000 as well. Not $290,000, nor $300,000 that seller 2 and seller 3 demanded. It clears at $280,000, which is where the transaction happened. In this example, a bit closer to real life, you have multiple buyers and multiple sellers. The houses are similar but slightly different, with the cheapest house needing some maintenance while the expensive house at $325,000 has been well maintained and even has some upgrades done. Buyer 1 is willing to purchase a home for $280,000 and seller 1 is asking for at least $275,000, thus they transact in this case. Buyer 2 is looking for a house in decent condition and is willing to offer up to $300,000. Thus, he comes to an agreement with seller 2 and purchases their home. However, buyer 3 is only willing to offer up to $320,000 for the third house. And seller 3 is asking for at least $325,000. Thus, they cannot transact until either the third buyer raises their offer 
or the seller 3 lowers their asking price, or both. Imagine buyer 3 is feeling a little more optimistic about the future, maybe got a pay raise and raises the offer to $322,000. And seller 3, not willing to sit on the home for a long time, is willing to accept $322,000. The price matches and now they can transact. So you see, in all these examples, the transaction happens when the marginal buyer and the marginal seller transact and the prices are set by them. To summarize, price discovery is the process through which prices are determined through an interaction of buyers and sellers. We looked at the housing market, but this works in every transaction. If you're buying groceries, such as apples from the farmer's market or even the grocery store, the price gets discovered by the sellers, that is the farmer or the grocery store, and the consumers who want to buy the apples. This allows prices to be set dynamically and markets to work efficiently. However, sometimes in markets, you see price in sensitive buyers or sellers. That is, they aren't motivated by price alone, but by other factors as well. For instance, if someone is moving and wants to sell a house quickly, they may accept a lower price. The transaction was still market-based, but such motivations impact the price discovery process. Similarly, if someone is buying a stock at any price without any regard for fundamentals, that will move the price higher as well. Such instances can manifest themselves in bubbles, such as a 99-2000 technology bubble or in major market crashes. A huge development has been the purchase of bonds, whether government bonds or corporate bonds, by the central banks of the world. Many central banks, such as the Bank of Japan, European Central Bank, have been buying bonds issued by the companies to support them. The Federal Reserve Bank of the United States also recently joined this club. Their motivation is to support the markets and thus price is not a factor. Without the intervention of the central banks, the bonds might trade at a different price. Thus, they are impacting the natural price discovery process. This is a huge issue in the capital markets today, and we'll be putting out more content to discuss this in detail. If you would like to learn more about what the Federal Reserve has been doing, please watch our videos on the subject, such as the Secondary Market Corporate Credit Facility Updates. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was educational and informative. If you want to see more of such videos, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.